it was tough, bro. I mean, there were there were suicidal moments. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Really? Oh hell yeah, man. There were. Oh god, yeah, yeah. And and you know what? I've been told not to say this, but I'm never ever not authentic. There were times where I contemplated hurting myself, um, and those times were they, they were not short lived. <laughs> You've been touring for for the past few years, but but you're definitely becoming you know mu you're you're coming back into the spotlight much more and more for comedy audiences around the country. Yeah. Do you get this reaction from people? Oh, you're making your comeback. Do you, are you getting that? Um. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't bother me. Okay. None of that bothers me because you know I think that's ego. Okay. That's an ego to say uh, you're making. Oh, I've always been here. Like right. who cares? I don't. I don't care what they think or what they feel. It's, as long as they give they give me an opportunity to 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 make them laugh, you know what I mean. But as you know, a lot of people are that. seeing you now, because, you know, for the first time. Sure. And they might not be familiar with you know the whole comedy store incident with Joe Rogan. Which, by the way, sure. now now that you see it so many years later, <laughs> at least me, I think that today Joe seems like a real jerk in that video. Like he he because he's coming. I mean, maybe at the time it, it it was like, whoa, look at these two comedians fighting on stage. But when you watch it now, he's being an asshole. Here's what happened. Like, and and here's the, here's the problem with all that incident, bro. Right. I was told by people that I paid tens of thousands of dollars, don't address it. Just let it go. I was told by Comedy Central, don't address it on the show. Don't do anything on the show. Let mm -hmm. it go. I did not feel that way. But I've also always thought, you know, if you're going to pay somebody to manage you and you don't take their advice, then you're just giving them money for free. Mm. There's got to be a reason for this. You can't just be the guy. And so I chose to, to not address it. And in hindsight, that was a problem because everybody thought that me not fighting about it was me acquiescing to all of that stuff. First of all, uh, Joe Rogan has never accused me of stealing his jokes. Right. It's always been something outside of his purview, right? It's never been. Uh, according according to the thing, I I stole a joke from Bill Cosby, right. which, I, which I didn't, but had I, he's a rapist and I don't care. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, really? Is that, that's the guy you want to protect? Right. So that, uh, but, you know, that was, this is in hindsight. W what, what happened was, and here's what the way it's always been. Dude, I I can take you to my office right now and you will see big binders of CDs inside of them. Mm -hmm. And some cassettes, no CDs, just cassettes. And you'll go, dude, that says uh, 1993. What is that? In 94, 95, 96, 97. It just keeps going all the way until now. I've recorded all my shows mm. since 1993. And so whenever I've been accused of stealing a joke, I go up to that person and say, hey, man, I heard that you said I took your joke. What joke is it? When did you do it? And I will go in my, arch my archives and find out when I did it because I can literally hand you a copy of something that's dated to show you when I wrote that joke. Mm -hmm. And if I wrote it first, then, you know, and if you did, I, I, dude, I'm, I'll be sorry. Right. But here's the thing. Whenever I do that, it, it stops. Yeah. So what, it happened that night. Right. That night, he said Carlos Menstelia. Right, that he said this guy opens for Carlos Menstelia, and it bothered me that he was messing with somebody else because of me. Right, I, I thought you want to attack me, attack me, but don't attack him for opening for me. That's not cool. So I went up on stage and I said, "All right, hey Joe, what joke did I steal from you?" And of course, it turned into something completely, totally different, and they recorded it, which uh, they were not supposed to record it, but they did it. They put it on there and whatever, whatever it happened, but. All that came because I wanted to address it. Yeah. And in you know, in the editing it looks different than it is, but in reality, I went up there and asked, What did I take from you? So so we could deal with it. And and I, he's never been able to say that. And look, I hope that nobody, you know, at this point, once you take the road that I took, you have to commit to it. Yeah. So I don't want anybody listening to this to think that I'm starting anything because I'm not. No. I have never said a negative thing. It sounds thing you're actually resolving it. About any comedian in the history of my time, and I, ne and I never will. Right. But, but here's, here's the problem. It's a, a buddy of mine, um, a really good friend of mine said, you know, you should call Joe and apologize or make up. He's got a great podcast, and it'd be good to be on his podcast. And and I said, he might, it might be the other way around. He should probably, <laughs> at this point, apologize to you for being so aggressive and in your face about but it. But here's what I said. I said, I don't, I don't, I, what am I supposed to say to somebody that accused me of stealing 
his joke, not not accuse me of stealing jokes, but not his. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that's tried to ruin my career. I've never tried to ruin his career. I've never tried to do anything bad to him. I've never done anything. So, what am I supposed to do? Like, mm -hmm. how do I address that? I don't. I don't. I don't know how to address that. I don't know how to, you know. If if Joe were to call me up or have somebody call me and say, "Hey man, you know, let's let's put all the stuff behind us," I would say, "Dude, it was behind me a long time ago." And if you need forgiveness, you know, yeah, fine. You know, you were a different person then. Mm -hmm. If if you're telling me this now, you must have been a different person then. And so we're, you know, go. But I can't call him because that's just it's not. It, it's it's not right. You, do you I don't, understand what I'm saying? I don't saying? think I don't think it's your you know place. I mean? Yeah, no, no. I don't think it's your place to do it because he's the one that initiated it in the first place. Right. He's the one that edited. He's the one that posted it. He's the one that took co comedy laundry right out into the public. Yeah. This was stuff that we used to resolve ourselves. Have you ever been back to the comedy store since? Yeah, yeah, but okay. not lately. Right. It, it was it, lately. It, I. It's hard. It was hard. It's not anymore. But it was hard. It was hard to walk into the comedy store and and see the faces of young punks who were nothing right you know what i mean who were just opening had never accomplished anything and the thing about being labeled a joke thief bro is what it does is in one felt swipe it delegitimizes everything that you've ever said in one sentence mm. that's a hard thing to deal with bro that's a very difficult thing to deal with as a comedian because You know, somebody can go, oh, my God, I saw he got a standing ovation. Whose jokes did he do? Right. What? Whose jokes did he do? I don't know. They don't know. They're not They're not comedy fans like that. They're, they didn't go online and check every other comedian. So then we just, oh, half his, half his stuff was stolen or whatever. They go, oh, my God, I didn't know that. Oh, really? Is that it? Yeah, go check out the video. Oh, my God. All of a sudden, whatever I said. Right. So that that was tough. You know, it's been years and years and years. Well, is that coming why and coming and coming and coming until they go, no, nah, he's... He, Well, he's, that's he's why I think that, that this is a good a, time for you right now. Yeah, but I, th I think that that's why it's a good time for you right now. Number one, you have new audiences that are discovering you. Right. Number two, like we said before, I think that right now is a time for a voice like yours. Yeah. And number three, considering now that we hate bullies, when you watch that video now, I'm <laughs> telling you, Joe Rogan seems like a, like, like, like an unnecessary bully. But he was bullying me. Yeah. He was bullying I know, me. Totally. He was talking about me. He was going on the air and talking about me. It, it was a bully. I just didn't, I, n I never connected. But I will say this, every single week, Every single week, I have people coming up to me apologizing to me for believing wow. that stuff. Well, that's huge. And that's like, you know, that's that's cool. But, you know, it doesn't take away. The, it was tough, bro. I mean, there were there were suicidal moments. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Really? Oh, hell yeah, man. There were, oh, God, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? I've been told not to say this, but I'm never, ever not authentic. There were times where I contemplated hurting myself. Um And those times were, they, they were not short-lived. Right. They were moments, wow. long moments. Oh, what am I thinking? Yeah. What is wrong with you, dude? You're a comedian. Stop. That's stupid. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? But where but, are you at now? But were they there? Um, no, no. Where are you at now? Where, where are you at now as far as, like, I mean, th are those thoughts long gone, especially since you're, you know, like, like I said, you're, you're, you're seeing new audiences, right. you're touring the country, you know, I, I'm listening to your material. It's so relevant and it's yeah. hard, so hard hitting. Right. Are, are you, are you past that? I'm very much past that. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not in a place where I, you know, I ever contemplate hurting myself, I, mm -hmm. you know, going to therapy and, and doing all that, you know, work for decade for over a decade mm. was really really helpful for me um you know i want i want i wanted to blow up my life and kind of start over again and it was hard because you know it, it, look people attacked me for a lot of reasons one of them was my success one of them was i was very very much uh i was like a horse with blinders you know if i went on stage i went on stage and i'd bump people i'd bump people i i didn't It's not that I didn't care. It's that that's how I grew up. As a young comic, we got bumped all the time because Robin Williams showed up or Richard Pryor showed up. And we were okay with that. We were like, yeah, that's it. Uh, when I got the chance to do it, it was already Gen Xers and millennials. And they didn't understand that. Mm. So young comedians would say, well, I'm, my spot is at 10. I'm supposed to go on at 10. Why is Carlos going on? And they, you know, the manager's like, because he has a TV show. Mm. And well, why doesn't Carlos call in? And then they didn't understand that the comedy store and the clubs told me not to call in because they would say, are you going to come for sure? 
And I said, well, I don't know. I mean, if I'm not tired, I will. But, you know, if, if, I'm, a, I'm, if I'm out to dinner with my wife and I go, hey, babe, let's go to the comedy store. And she goes, no, not today. You do that every weekend, not today. No, I'm not going to show up. And they go, and then we're going to have to refund the money of all the people that we mm -hmm. told you're going to come to the show. So if you want to pop in, pop in. But I abused that privilege. From I got, That was the hardest thing for me to deal with, to work on, because that's the part that I had to go, okay, I know that all these guys don't hate me because I'm taking their jokes. Because I know if I walked up to them right now and said, what joke did I take from you? They wouldn't have an answer. Mm -hmm. But they want to hate me because I did something that hurt them mm. in their eyes. And that I did do. Um, I don't apologize for it because it's what was done to me, but I can understand how they felt. And I, I just came in at the wrong place at the wrong time in a lot of ways. But I, here's another example. A lot of people thought that my show was replacing Chappelle's show mm. because from the outside looking in, he's going to come back. He doesn't come back. It's January. By March or April, they said, okay, Here's Carlos Mencia, who does an ethnic show. Right. What they don't know is I was supposed to go on after him. My show was slated to go on after him. I was the happiest dude in the world. Not only did they say, you got a show, you're going on after the most successful show. <laughs> and he's going to probably say, wait for Carlos Mencia or get just, you know, that stamp of approval from him. It, it would have been amazing. But then all of a sudden, he didn't come back. And so the narrative became, who's this guy replacing mm. Chappelle? And why are they trying to feed us a Latino version of Chappelle's show? Mm. Which was nothing what is it supposed to be. But it came in at a different time. And that's, that's how it was. So what I've had to deal with is we don't get to choose when we're born. We don't get to choose the time that we live. We don't get to choose... You know, sometimes things work out perfectly in, in a perfect way. There was a uh, an episode of, of Louis. Yeah. Uh, um, speaking of somebody that you know uh, uh, goes away and comes back, or not, not the same as you. Um, <laughs> there's a, an episode where David Lynch tells him three shows of uh, the three rules of show business. I think that they're great and they apply to you. Right. Okay. So the first one is look him in the eye and speak from the heart. You yes. got that nailed. Nailed. <laughs> Number two, you gotta go away to come back. Yes, which is huge. That I didn't know. And and you have and you have the trials and tribulations. The third one, and I think this goes back to the managers telling you yeah. to not say anything. Yeah. If anyone in show business, I don't know if this applies outside of show business. In show business, if ever if anyone ever tells you to keep a secret, it's a lie. In other words, they shouldn't have told you to keep your comebacks, to keep your reply a secret. Right. Because then it turns into a lie. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. But, you know, look, at the end of the day, I, I made my bed. I, you know, did, did I suffer financially for all that stuff? Yeah. I, I won't lie to you, bro. That cost me millions of dollars mm -hmm. in, in revenue. My, the apex of my career and the lowest point of my career, so to speak, came like so <laughs> close to each other that I went, all right, let, let, let me go back in time and look at the history of other comics it had never happened like that. Right. Not like that. Because like I said, I went from that guy is great to everything he does means nothing. It's not his. It's delegitimized immediately. It's like a parent saying, this is my son and everybody gone. He's adopted and everything being taken away. But man, the fact that you stayed in the game and the fact that you're, you're back, you're touring, you're, you're building a new audience, you're putting out YouTube videos, you're doing a yeah. podcast, you're doing all those things. That you have these trials and tribulations under your belt gives you a story that's much more powerful than these guys that just go out, never get in trouble, and stay I'm, in the corner yeah. and just do their sets and go home. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for what's to come but in, in many ways. First of all, I'm, I, I know now how to deal with, you know, the negativity, the trollers. Right. I know how to deal with those people. You know, even online, I, I say, hey, listen. I give one chance. I answer one question. Mm -hmm. or, hey, what comedian are you talking about? Or, oh, and, and if that's it, okay, I'm I'm blocking you because right. if you don't, if you just want to hate me, right? Then don't don't come and mess it up for everybody else. Um, but I think more importantly, it's slowed down. And I, I have never taken my audiences for granted, never. But it's easy to be happy when all the seats are filled. Mm -hmm. It's what I've learned to do that I am very proud of is I can perform in a 300 seat room in Omaha, Nebraska that only has 78 people in it. Mm -hmm. Get a standing ovation in that room because I only see the seats that are filled. I don't care about the people that didn't come. They're not important. They're not there. I can't, 
why make them relevant? And so that has made me a different type of, of performer. It's, it's, it's allowed me to be in the moment and, and, and uh, see things with clarity. But, mm. it, but dude, it's, you know, it's, it's wisdom that comes from, you know, living in pain and not letting go and holding on too tight and, you know, letting your ego at times ride you because, you know, there are times when you need ego. There are times when you need to believe that you can do something. Right. Like right now, for example, without my ego, I won't make this quote unquote comeback. Mm. I have to believe that it's coming. Mm. I have to believe that everything that I do is leading to more people to see to a TV show to whatever it, it is. It's already that's, happening. That's my point. But it but it's because I believe that. And right. that's just belief. That's ego. That's not, you know, I think the difference is when you're young, it's cocky, right? Because you know, when you're young, when you're young at anything, you, you you're not as good as everybody else. But you got talent, so you, you just gotta tell yourself, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Once you've proven to yourself that you're mm. good, you don't have to do that anymore. I'm in that place. I'm, I I think my father said to me the other day, um, no, I'm gonna crack. Uh, my father said to me the other day, he said, "Mijo, you 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 finally understand the the, the joke about the bull and, and his father." I go, "I think I understood it a while ago, Dad, but I I I I get that you're saying that you see in me the the father bull, and you know the story about the, the bull and the father bull." Save the walking down the hill. Yeah. Okay, go say. Why don't you give it to us one more time? Uh, so there's a bunch of cows at the bottom of the hill. There's a bull and his father on top of the hill. The young bull says. Dad, let's run down there and bang all the cows. And the father says, no, son, let's, no. He says, let's, wait, let's, let's run down walk. there. No, let's run down there and bang one of the cows. And the father says, no, 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 no. Let's walk down there and bang them all. Yeah. Um, and you you ran the down the first time and then you had to go back up and now you're walking down. Yeah, I, I ran down. But I, but I, but on the way to bang the cow, I think I... I banged a few cows that had that had other bulls or something. That's hilarious. Because I pissed off a lot of people. And here's the interesting thing: as edgy as my comedy is, that's not what pissed people off. It was, or maybe it was, and they just wanted an excuse. I don't know. I think I think that I America did not understand my style of comedy, and I know that because I remember doing a show where the president of Disney came to see me perform. And a guy, uh, an agent from William Morris, like the co big comedy agent at the time from William Morris. And I walked off stage after getting a standing ovation in the original room at the Comedy Star. And uh, the agent said to me, I can't sign you because I, I don't get what you're doing. I don't understand what you're doing. And I looked at him and I said, my job is to make people laugh. Laugh to the point where the epitome of a perfect performance is people standing up because that's the most they could do and i did that how do you not what do you not get about that and he said i don't understand why you're angry and i said but i'm not angry it's just com comedy frustration about i'm talking about things that are frustrating so that's not, i'm not legitimately angry i'm if i was people wouldn't be laughing and he said i just don't get it and so i think part of it was a lot of a combination of things that led people to not like what I do because it felt abrasive. Whereas to, as an example, today, I won't just say to a mom, you're not a good parent. I'll bring her into the joke and let her live that moment. Mm -hmm. And in living that moment, there that woman doesn't leave going, this dude's a dick. You know what I mean? They leave going, wow, that... I never looked at it like that or he's right or whatever that is, but it's not the same, you know, Heisman right. Trophy arm that yeah. I would get before. And so in order to do what I'm about to do, and I'm going to say this yeah. to camera, in order to accomplish what is to come, I had to go through what I went through to be able to be the type of artist that I wanted to become.